Today I'm presenting the Kawai 506N acoustic piano and it's just a great overall basic piano and you'll find out what I mean as soon as we come back. Ted Barsalu with Alamo Piano Galleries. Look for us online at alamopianogalleries.com. We have stores in Michigan, there's two. We have two in Ohio, two in Texas, and a store in St. Louis and Kansas City is, as well. Again today, hey, a basic piano, good overall, perhaps even great, is better than no piano. And what I mean by that is compared to some of the other Kawai instruments that we've reviewed and looked at on this channel, this is one instrument that was designed, engineered, built, manufactured, distributed, and brought to you to maintain economic, uh, what can I say, frugality. And uh, because of that, there's some things that are a little bit different about this piano, but at the same time, when you play it, it still plays like a, like a Kawai piano, and it still sounds like a Kawai piano. And I had mentioned that I, I, I didn't know if this is, I, I'm gonna try to rephrase my, my initial assessment of this uh, 506 uh, N piano. I really do like them. They tune great, there's nothing funny with them. However, just based on my observation, it has that toe block design, which makes it look like really kind of corporate or institutional or social club. And this is the kind of piano that everyone plays on, everyone's aware of, but no one's really sure who owns one because it's the piano that's in the hall, it's the thing that's on the stage in your cafeteria, at your school, your elementary, we had one, it, it's, it's a basic piano. And when I meant basic piano, that's exactly what I meant. And what makes this different uh, from other pianos for Kawhi is they, they used all of their advanced tech, technology in designing and engineering, but rather than put out the Millennium 3 carbon fiber composite action, they use the ABS styrene action parts in here. And they have a different kind of uh, uh, touch on their, on their, their keyboard. Uh, they have like a, a phenol touch or something, a, a different kind of uh, topping that they use on, on the key touch. It's still great. I didn't know it was really different than the Neotex until um, I'm, I'm reading it. Also the back pose. Okay, they have five back pose, but I guess the big difference here is that they're not solid back pose. They're laminated back, back pose. And also on here, and this is what I can say in defense of a lot of piano manufacturers, including a lot of American piano ma manufacturers in the past, all of their soundboards are solid soundboards with ribs. There was a time where a lot of American manufacturers put laminated soundboards in it, so it wasn't even solid spruce. It was like a piece of plywood, literally, even though it was soundboard plywood. And it was really kind of hard to tell the difference on some of those. As those laminated boards got older, some of them really seasoned into having a very distinctive sound. And in particular, the Wurlitzer Spinets and some of the small Wurlitzer Grands have a very distinctive sound only because they have a laminated soundboard in them and over time they kind of aged. The other thing I, I wanted to mention on here, this piano is about 45 inches tall. I think the scale design is 44 and a half inches. And that is the speaking length of, of the lowest string that A on the piano is 44 and about a half inches. It's just almost the exact same thing as the height. And I want to mention that when we uh, listen to the recording of this piano, we're going to be listening to the same type of uh, recording that presents itself in one of our uh, related channels, the Alamo Music Audio Lab. Uh, fortunate enough, Chris Klein uh, invited me on to go play some pianos for his uh, exploration of the Earthworks PM40 stereo uh, high, I think they call it high condenser uh, quality uh, condenser microphoner. Uh, anyway, let's have a listen to the 506N from Kauai. And when we come back, I have a few wrap-up points I want to mention.
One thing that you will not be able to tell in um, the sound, or at least in the demo, is that they have what is called their ultra-responsive direct blow action. That is almost the sound of direct blow action is advertising from almost every major American upright manufacturer in the 50s and 60s and 70s. It was, don't get a spinet piano because it doesn't have direct blow. And all they're talking about is that this is where you press on the key here, direct blow means the action is on top of the, uh, the, uh, the end of the key. It's on, it's on the whole key. So the action goes up this way, as opposed to a spinet where there's a stick that goes down a dowel, and when you push down on the key, it pulls up on a lever and the action is below key level. So to my knowledge, I don't think anyone's manufacturing a spinet piano in this day and age. So almost everything's going to be some type of direct blow, but that's their trademark name. Again, this has been a demonstration of the 506N Kawai piano, which is made uh, pretty much to contain the cost and deliver a really highly responsive piano that is an excellent instrument for any choir room, music room, even a living room. It doesn't have the most furniture ap appearing thing. That is the one thing. The look of it is a little bit different. Uh, it is designed mostly for social gathering spots. So like the Elks Lounge or like the, any kind of social club where a place where they have weddings, receptions, parties, uh, as well as public function schools and buildings like that, institutions. It's a great all around functional piano. This is Ted with Alamo Piano Galleries. If you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. Send me your questions and comments about this particular piano or any other kind of piano experience you have that you think we may be able to help you with. And we'll look for you online and we'll look for you to come in and play some of these instruments in our stores. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon.